Welcome to the Make Life Fun Show. I'm your host, Josie Wheatman, and I am so excited that you're here. I have graduated the mom game. I have been in it now for almost a year. Can you believe it? Ever is walking. Wow, it's a whole new game. Through the last 25 episodes, I have learned so much and I have grown in my craft. I have grown as a mom. And the biggest thing I've learned is just love, 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 taking it in, giving it out, love, and being in the present moment with my son and continuously just giving him my regulated self as often as I can. And that is what's changing the game in motherhood. That is what's breaking my generation of parenting. If you are new to listening, you are in for a treat. Welcome back, Soul Family, to the Make Life Fun Podcast. I am so excited you are here, and I have the pleasure of speaking with Stacey McCray today, and I am so feeling blessed and excited to have her with us today. So Stacey, welcome. Well, thank you for the warm welcome. I'm excited to be here and in your presence. I immediately just feel all the good vibes. So <laughs> thank <Yay>. you. <laughs> Please tell us a little bit about yourself and about your journey into this fun world of motherhood, into the journey of you. Yeah, of course. So I'll just share what I think is important at this point in time, which is I'm a wife too, just incredible husband who just pushes me to be a better human being in all facets. So I'm so grateful for that partnership. And then I'm also a mama to a sassy, feisty, strong-willed little girl who is five years old. She's amazing. She keeps me on my toes. And I'm also a mom to a two-year-old son who is emotionally intense and is the most caring individual I've ever met in my life. So it just fills my heart to be his mama all the time. I'm also a full-time career woman. So I'm in the finance space and banking. And so I have been doing that for 11 years now. So I have a full-time nine to five job outside of my motherhood role. Uh, so I definitely have a heart for moms in general and working moms trying to balance all of these things and become who you're called to be. Yeah. And I also have a bunch of, I'm so multi-passionate about so many areas. I love nerding out on things like personal finance, fitness and nutrition, which affects all parts of your body mm -hmm. and just sharing how to integrate your faith into your everyday life. So it's not like this separate abstract religious type of thing, but something that is something that you're living through daily and that you're leveraging as an incredible tool to really be who God has called you to be. So that's me in a nutshell. Those are my passions and yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> you in a nutshell is beautiful. I love how you're speaking to each kid has their own personality. <laughs> <laughs> each kid is who they are and we have to love them and meet them where they are and I would love for you to speak on that a little bit because I only have one I have Everett and he is 11 months old and so he's still very moldable and hasn't got to that sassy <laughs> strong world which I'm sure it's to come soon so I would love for you to speak on that just a little bit sure I think the first thing that comes to mind is I was randomly watching Red Table Talk. Will Smith, that's like the show with Jada Pinkett Smith and like her mom and her daughter. They talk about all the things, right? And like they had Will Smith on the show. And this was so transformative for me when Will was like, he basically said that like kids are like a seed. So like all of the DNA and who they are made up to be, their personality traits, their makeup is already decided. Mm -hmm. Like when you get them into mm -hmm. your care. Your job, which is I'm taking on, is like my job is to nurture, water, provide good soil. So it's, it is a big factor of accepting who they are. And I think what's hard for myself and a lot of parents is sometimes there's certain like aspirations that we have or ways that we want to be and like we'll try to like project that onto them. So there's this constant reframing and monitoring your mind and your thoughts to say, okay, wait, is this something that Stacy is trying to project onto my kids or is this something that I'm doing to try to help cultivate these beautiful traits that they have that I may not be familiar with, or they may get on my nerves sometimes, but like my daughter, for example, she's so assertive. She's such a leader. And I had times in my life where I was the more quiet person when it came to speaking up for things that were important to me or having to face confrontation. So I'm like, I'm very careful now. Like, I don't want to create her to be this people pleasing, you know, nice girl who lets people walk over her. She's already got this innate trait in her that's so fiery. So let me encourage that in a way and direct it 
towards success and something that'll be good for her. So I think it's just being mindful about separating those two things about what are things that I want for my child and what's really best for them and accepting them as they are. And it's a beautiful thing to watch. It's a beautiful thing to watch. And the way you were saying it just gave me chills because it's so true. They are a seed and our job is to create that environment for them to thrive in. And that is such a beautiful way for it to be put. And I love that you're speaking of accepting them for who they are, because in this show, we talk about accepting ourselves as mothers Mm -hmm. where we are. And so I would love for you to even speak on that a little bit on accepting ourselves as a mother. And I know before we started recording, you were speaking to the fact that we are not just mothers, we are so much more. And so yes, please. Yeah, I think the thing is with a lot of moms is that for me personally, too, like we want to be such good moms, like when you become a mom, like you immediately kind of feel the weight and the pressure on what you need to do and how you need to perform and who you need to be. And so I think we start naturally start creating this vision of like how motherhood will be and how we want to be as moms. And then for me personally, that contributed to a lot of the postpartum depression that I had, because what happened was I had these expectations of who I thought I should be as a mom, how I thought I should down to like how I thought I should feel towards my daughter. Like I should be like in this euphoric love for her all the time. And like sometimes homegirl got on my nerves. Okay. So it wasn't always like that. And so I started like getting frustrated with the way that I was feeling and how I was performing as a mom. And I had set all these high expectations on myself. I was like, I'm going to breastfeed for a year plus, and I'm going to make all her food organic and homemade so that she is just the most healthy child ever. And there was some of that that I did do that was near and dear to my heart. Like breastfeeding was really important to me. So I did do that for a year for both of them. But it was just an example of all of these expectations that I set up for myself. And then I didn't feel like I was measuring up. So like the gap between how I thought I should be as a mom versus the uh, reality (laughs) was different, starkly different. So that created that strong sense of failure as a person and an individual And what I was doing is I was tying my worth and identity into my performance as a mom based upon these unrealistic expectations. And that was very overwhelming for me. And you're already alone a lot as a mom. I took on like almost a year of maternity leave from work with my daughter. And I don't regret a day of it because it was so important for that bonding time for us. But it was lonely a lot of the times, Josie. Like, it's just me and this baby all day. That is very lonely. And if you're already a person like me who tries to deal with her, her issues and her drama internally by Mm -hmm. herself, like forgetting to use the support of other people or forgetting to consult God in this, like it can just feel like you're alone in this really dark place. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it was not finding my identity just in my motherhood role, but then eventually transforming into becoming someone who gets back to the things that I love and enjoy Cause it's like, I let all of those things go. I was like, I gotta be a good mom. And it's like, well, okay. You're looking pretty raggedy every day. Like you have this weight that you just have not even tried to address because you're not even active anymore. You're not thinking about what's going into your body. Like, I mean, I, I wasn't hanging out with my friends anymore. I wasn't doing the things that I enjoyed. So it was getting back to doing the things that I enjoyed, which ended up making me a better mom mm. in the end anyway. <laughs> so yeah, it's just accepting where you're at. And I think adjusting those expectations down to what's more realistic and choosing what are those core things to you? Like, you're not going to be 100% A plus in every motherhood area. But for me, I know it's so important for me to connect with my kids. Am I connecting with them? Am I spending quality time with them? Am I encouraging them and building them up so that their sense of self is strong? If I'm doing those two things, it doesn't matter if they had chicken nuggets for dinner four nights in a row. It doesn't matter that I didn't do the best job styling my daughter's hair, which I love to do and share about that stuff too. But like, maybe she's not looking the best with just a regular slick back, simple bun. Like who cares? Like, am I doing those critical things that I know are valuable and important to me? And if I am, that's great. Yes. Oh, well said. It is so true. The expectations. They're the thief of our joy sometimes. So rude. You're so rude. And I think too, which I think is important. And I talked about this before, I think on one of my episodes, but the thing about motherhood, becoming a mom is going to force you to start addressing some deep rooted stuff that you have let lay lie dormant because you were able to kind of maybe manage it. But once you're pushed into a point where somebody else is dependent on you 24 seven, and you may not be getting more than two hours of consecutive sleep a night, (laughs) like 
you're like crushed down to the bare minimum of what you have left to give. So it's like all of those things. Like for me, it was insecurities, perfectionism, which is related to the failure issue. All of those things are coming front and center and I'm forced with having to face them and work through them. And that's mm -hmm. a whole journey and process. So while motherhood, like I got lost in the identity of motherhood, it also pushed me towards really healing in a lot of ways. So I think yes. that was part important too, as part of the acceptance piece. Absolutely. That journey, the journey for me into motherhood did exactly that. I'd been working on my healing, been dabbling in my healing, been dabbling in my spirituality, just dabbling, living life and creating some things that I want, some things that I don't. But the moment I became a mother, it was like right in your face. These are the issues. <laughs> there they are, Josie. You better get to work on them because if you don't fix them, if you don't work on them, if you don't give them the light that they need to change and adapt and evolve, that's going to keep coming up for one. And also it's going to go right to your child for two. And what we have learned is healthy mother, healthy child, also healthy mom, happy home, because you're, yeah. yes, you're setting the tone for it all. Like mom sets the tone in the house. They really do. And you said something about the child, like, man, these children, they are, they're so much more like advanced and talented mentally mm -hmm. than we think. I mean, I remember like when I was dealing with postpartum depression and I, I know I was like going through a tough time and like my daughter could pick up on it. She would say like, mommy, you know, are you, are you okay? And it's like, oh my gosh, like I didn't realize that they could, they were feeding off of that energy mm -hmm. and they could pick up on it and they could sense and that's heartbreaking. So it's like, I had no other choice but to do the inner work to do the work because I was like, not only for me, and sometimes I think at the beginning, you may only want to do it for your kids, but really it's for you too. But at least in that moment, I knew I was like, well, at least for them, I know that I can't stay in this space. Like I can't be, that's not the mom I want to be. So I knew I had to start unwinding some stuff and, and rebuilding. So that was the wake up for you was mm -hmm. her saying mommy. Yeah. Getting emotional. <laughs> That's so true. If you're not doing it for yourself, then as moms, we're so eager to do things for our children. And mm -hmm. so, yes, doing that opening and allowing and illuminating that darkness that has probably been there for so long for your child. And that for me, yeah, that was what did it. And that was what has been enabling me to go after my dreams, to show up as my true self, to allow myself to not people please, not be a perfectionist. Like what you were saying, when I thought, when I became a mom, it was my mother did it. She had five. So I have one. So I should be able to do it all. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Sometimes we even compare ourselves and that's a whole other topic, probably like the comparison issue. But I think a lot of moms too will compare themselves to their own moms. And like, I even said that I was like, cause my mom was super sweet. She was such a servant. She was like pretty much a hundred percent patient all the time. So it, when there was like having moments where I felt like I wasn't measuring up to what she was doing, I was like, Oh my gosh. But my husband and I talked about this too, because he had his, his own perspective of what mothers should look like. And it's like, every mom is unique. Mm -hmm. And like, he even talked about this for me. He was like, you know, I saw a mom that was always willing to like be home with her kids and all this. Mm -hmm. But it was like, then I saw Stacy who was like killing it with her career, killing it with her fitness, like looking fine. And it was like, I gotta just, I gotta honor her for who the, the mom that she is versus what I've seen before. And same for me. So it's like, you are a unique mother. Follow that instinct, partner with God to be who you've been created to be as a mom. And your kids will love that. Like you were partnered with your kids for a reason. Like there's a reason why your son is your son, Josie. Like there's a reason why I got these little feisty little individuals. Like God, for some reason knew that I could handle it. So, but only if I'm authentically in alignment with who I am and what my giftings are. Yes. So. Yes. That's the truth that coming into the alignment piece is so huge of who you truly are and who God created you to be. I would love for you to speak on that a little bit because like the thought in my brain, when I think of who I am now and who I was before, before I didn't realize that I was created to be this Josie that I am today. Mm -hmm. I thought I was supposed to fit into this box and be that robot on the world and just go on living in the gray, basically. Right. <sighs> and it wasn't until I went on my spiritual journey that I'm like, no, I'm made to shine. I'm made to be bigger. I'm made to be me. So for you, what was that journey? 
I think it was, yeah, I think it was a couple of things. And quite honestly, it kind of started for me with the transformation, I think, is I started listening to podcasts because Mm. with my second child going back to work, I was intimidated. I was like, how, how am I supposed to work Mm -hmm. full time and parent these kids? Kids get sick a lot at daycares, like, and then you're scrambling trying to figure out how to get a project done. So I was just overwhelmed. So I started like venturing into podcast listening. And I eventually came across one of our podcasters that we love, which is Kathy Heller. And the way that she spoke for some reason gave me permission to be who I am. And it was just like this revelation of like, why am I living to accommodate others? Like, it was like, I was like a flashback of looking back at all the times that I I was going to make me cry almost like how I shrunk to make people feel comfortable around me and not be this human that is highly energetic, incredibly loving. So then I would try to protect myself and like, well, I can't really show people love too much because they might take advantage of me. And like, that's not my business. (laughs) <laughs> like what people do with the giving, the loving, the energy that I put out there, that's on them. Like that's not my business to, to control. Like God has called me to walk the way that he created me to be. So I got back to this place to where I was just able to be like an outpouring to people. Like I got back into my flow of being energetic, of encouraging people. That's a huge gift that I have is being encouraging. And like before I'd be like, well, I don't want to make people uncomfortable. And I don't really know if they want to hear from like all this questioning. And then it just gave me the freedom to say, no, if I feel led, if I, if my instincts, if the Holy spirit is leading me to do this, I'm going to act on it and then let it be. Mm -hmm. And whatever it is, it is. But I know that I did my part. I know I did what I was called to do. And there's so much freedom in being yourself and not trying to be who you think you should be. Mm -hmm. And it just, I feel like I'm in a whole new life right now. Like, I don't know if you felt similar, Josie, but it's like, who was that girl? Like, you know, I still have elements of her, right? But it's just like, I'm not the same person anymore. I think it's that whole thing that people are talking about now. Like it's leveling up. Like (laughs) you're letting go of those traits that no longer serve you Mm -hmm. and replacing them with the good. And I can't say that without talking about how God has been instrumental in that and like helping me rewire the way that I think about myself. And there's a scripture that I love that says like, take captive every thought that is not in alignment with what God's word says. So when I had these thoughts of like, oh, you're a failure or you're not good enough, you're not worthy. It was like, "Ah, ah, no, we taken captive. That's a trigger. So what does God say about me? I'm a child of God. I'm more than a conqueror. I have the mind of Christ. I'm beautifully and wonderfully made. I'm righteous in his sight. So like, I don't have to feel any shame about anything that I've done in the past. I don't have to worry about what my thoughts are saying that aren't true or aren't beneficial. But so I was just slowly rewiring my thoughts. It's crazy how eventually like your state of being has to align with what your faith is and what your thought patterns are and neuroscience, you know, backs up all of that too. Yes. Yes. To all of it. It is so true that rewiring of the mind, I call it brainwashing yourself Yep. with, for me too, is reading the word and knowing that we are loved, we are redeemed, we are made perfect in his eyes. We are made in his image to create things to be magical, right? And we're pretty but awesome. Why, why <laughs> wasn't that the outpouring in our lives at a younger age? Why wasn't that magnified? Was, why wasn't that the biggest part of this whole thing? Because I've been talking to my friends since I have found this revelation for myself, and it's allowed me to bloom into the version that you see today. And what I get from my friends and my clients and the people that don't quite get it yet is that they just think there is this person in the sky that is giving them hard times and they're being punished. And you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. For me too, growing up, there was a moment in time where I thought I was being punished. And I thought those words that I now know to be true, like I know, like I know, weren't there. You know, it's so funny you're talking about this because- I think that's where like some confusion came for me too. Like I talked a little bit like about my mom and my parents were in ministry. And so like, I always grew up like in church settings and had, you know, amazing memories there too. But it was like, what was missing? Like, because you think, I think some of you are like, well, I was in a faith-based community. Like, shouldn't I have been wired the right way? But I don't think in those environments enough is being addressed 
from a very individual standpoint, from a very mindset standpoint, and from that like individual transformation that has to happen between you and God. And I think I'm on this journey too, where I wouldn't say there's this popular term that's called like deconstructing of the faith right now. And I wouldn't say that I'm deconstructing in the sense of like the foundational principles that I believe in, like I'm a strong believer in God. I believe in Jesus Christ as the son of God. Like I, that's all there, but there's all this rewiring that I'm now doing for, from things that were programmed in me growing up in some of the faith-based communities to who like, what is actually biblically true? Like what is actually true through my experiences with God versus like just kind of being fed things that maybe weren't really always fruitful. So I'm definitely on the same, I think, spiritual journey that you are on too. And I think that's part of it is like, sometimes we assume that we should have gotten everything we needed, whether it was in faith, whether it was school or whether it was your parents. And it's like, they weren't, they weren't always able to give you everything you need. And some of it is you going on this journey on your own, seeking out that help, asking questions and being curious. Mm -hmm. It's a big one, asking questions, being curious and having that grace and compassion for the people that helped you get to where you are today. Because like you said, we only know what we know until we know differently, right? The more I know too, the more I share with my mother, the more she, her eyes are opening too. So I think there is a place for that curiosity, that seeking and knowing and finding it for yourself. Because two, if they would have wired us in that way, who knows if we would have believed it? Who knows if we would have bought it? Right. And we may not have been in a position to receive it. I mean, think about like the space that you're in now and things that you hear and it's transformational. And it's like, man, I think I've heard that before, but it didn't hit me like that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Because like you weren't primed, you you weren't primed in a position to be able to receive whatever is being given to you. So I think that's, that's so important. Yeah. But, but yeah, and I think that grace and compassion piece, man, it's so important. I think that's huge for your parents too, because like you have all these big transformations and shifts that you're making in your life. And like, you can't point fingers back at them. Like, why didn't they teach me this? Why didn't they do that? Like they did the best that they could with what they had. Now we can build from that. Yes. So, and my mom, even like my mom sends me texts and she's like, oh my gosh, I look up to you as a mom. I'm like, really? I'm like, I looked up to you. Like, she's like the way that you just manage your household and have a career and the way that you take care of your body. She was like, it's so inspiring. And so, yeah, it's, it's comes full circle. Yes. And it feels so good. I'm sure to hear all of that mm. come from your mother. Cause I know getting that approval from my mom is still, I'm 34 years old and it oh. still feels so good. I'm like, Thank you all. <laughs> like we're grown and we're still like, yes, thank you for the validation, mommy. <laughs> yeah, but I think that's perfectly okay. For sure. So yes, I would love for you to speak on like creating mindfulness in your home, creating that, that space. Cause you're just talking about how your mom says, how you run that household, how you are working full time and taking care of a home. Like, how are you doing it? I know there is grace there. But how? Yeah, (laughs) I think really what's something that's come to the surface for me in the last few months is really like understanding what being present means. Because like, for me, I I would hear all these concepts. I'm like, what does that mean? Like people are like, oh, mindfulness and being present. Like, yeah, it sounds nice, but it really is something that you can put into place. So it's like when my kids are with me and I am playing with them, I'm thinking about, wow, this is a great moment. Like, wow, I'm never going to get this moment back again. What a beautiful time. Like when my son, he's two and he still tries to like have me carry him like a baby. And I'm like, how much longer am I going to be able to hold him like this? In this moment, I am like just spiritually like soaking it all in like imprinting it on my memory versus before it was more of like, what's the next thing that has to be done? All right, guys, it's dinner time. All right, guys, it's bath time. But like enjoying the bath time, like, cause it's like in a, maybe a year or so, like my daughter is not going to need me to help make sure she washes her neck. <laughs> like She's going to do it herself. And that is going to pass. And so I think it's just really stepping fully into each moments that may seem mundane or may seem like they're not super purposeful, but it's the collective of all of those things. And so I think that's really important for me to feel connected to my kids and all of this. And I think too, it's becoming more, it's been becoming more intentional. Like I have a very like methodical, logical structure inside, but I also have a very free spirited, like go with the flow side. So it's like knowing when to enact which part of me when. 
So like when it's like the planning stages, okay, we got soccer games, we got this going on. I'm like meticulous with my calendar, but then it's like other moments where somebody gets sick. I have to just let go of that circumstance or situation and be like, this is what it is right now. And then just admitting, Hey, this is hard. It's okay to say that out loud, like and yes. release it. This is a hard moment, but you know what? Like I've been here before. I know God is with me. I know everything is going to be okay. Like I don't have time to beat myself up about missing a meeting at work because my kids at the end of the day are the priorities. So I think it's really having the grace, like you said, to know that everything's not going to be perfect. And then just having that leading, like letting the Holy Spirit like lead you into what to do next and how to focus your time. And I think that happened a lot during COVID. Like my kids were home all day and we both, my husband and I both had full time jobs. So it really was this discernment piece of like, and I think a lot of people call it, call it that inner knowing. Mm -hmm. It's like trusting yourself that like right now it's time for me to focus on work and my kids will be fine watching their tablet or putting the puzzle together. Right now, I'm going to have to cancel this meeting because I see that I need to make a heart to heart connection with my daughter right now. So having that discernment to know what to do when and having intentionality around everything, I think has been really critical for me to keep everything going and running. And it's hard to let go of some stuff. Like I hate seeing a house messy, <laughs> but there's this laundry mountain that we have that like my husband said it yesterday. He was like, I got that laundry mountain down. I was like, yeah, it only takes about 30 minutes for it to get right back to where it was. And so it's just like accepting that I'm probably going to see a laundry mountain for now. And then thinking about maybe I need to outsource that. <laughs> so yeah, lots of things, but that's, that's how I'm managing it now. Yes. I'm glad that you're saying that laundry mountain with a smile on your face because it's, it's necessary, right? Oh yeah. You have to like make fun of the areas where you normally would, would be like, eek. Mm. that's what I'm finding too, is like the dishes. That was the thing for me. Like I want the dishes done before I go to bed. So I started doing this whole habit stacking. I'm going to make tea, do the dishes and right. I don't get my tea until the dishes is done. Yeah. That worked for about two ties. <laughs> Yeah, your, your heart was in the right place. But reality is, I mean, I think we do that all the time. And I think if you have like any perfectionism tendencies, and this happens when I coach people with like their food and nutrition too, it's like, let that go. So what that you didn't do it that night? It's a new freaking day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, it's a new day to be great. <laughs> so it is. And it's that intention. Yeah, yeah. It's that intentionality of having that intention and being led versus forcing all the things. Mm -hmm. And I know that for me, that is what's made motherhood so much more juicy, so much more fun, so much more ease is allowing myself to be in that place of intentionally being present, intentionally being there. Because when I feel like the days when I'm scheduling too many things in at once, I am just moving, 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 moving. And then at mm -hmm. the end of the day, it just feels like I was hit by a tornado. Yeah. And you're like, whoa. And it's a learning curve, right? But you learn from those situations. I've had that where I'm like, okay, you did way too much today. Mm -hmm. Like you're not built for that right now. Like let's mm -hmm. just re you know, rewind this and like reflect on what works for you. Where do you feel good at? Where do you mm -hmm. still feel energized? Okay. You're not going to do more than two podcast interviews a day. I try, I did, I think I did five one day when I first started this journey and I'm so excited. And I'm like, yes, I love talking to people about all this deep, juicy stuff. By the end of that day, I think my voice is gone. Like, so I was just like, yeah, I learned from that. But I don't beat myself up for it anymore. I think before, before I would beat myself up so bad if I didn't do something, like I said, the way that I thought I should or the way I thought someone else should. And now it's like this freedom of just like, well, that didn't happen that day. Oh, well, moving yes. forward. Freedom. <laughs> freedom. Yeah. That's the word. Is We are in charge of giving ourselves that freedom, that grace, that compassion, that love all the things we need that we usually look outside of ourselves to get, like we have to start, it starts with us. Yep. It really does start with us. And I think that for me, what's been so eye opening is like, oh my gosh, sometimes it's like the smallest shifts. Mm. Like it's the smallest mindset tweaks that make the biggest difference. Like, so that's, what's been baffling to me. I'm like, all I could have done this whole time <laughs> was just like stop myself from going down the spiral, like, and I could be so much better. And so it's just amazing how some of this stuff, I think when you think about the transformation that happens, which is so big, it makes it seem like the steps to get there are really, really tough. But a lot of times it's these little switches yeah. that you can make that can really shift the direction of your life. Yes. It's that decision. It's that decision to catch it and be aware and awake to your life and keep doing it and keep doing it until it becomes the norm for you. Mm -hmm. And you hit the nail on the head when you say 
really was this easy this whole time (laughs) yeah I'm like I could have been a lot more free like than I was before like being in this like you kind of said too it's like you're in this box and you almost like you feel trapped Mm -hmm. And I, when you when you push down your giftings and you push down these personality traits that you think may be too overwhelming for people, that's what I thought. I was like, my energy, maybe it's overwhelming for people or maybe people are going to think I'm fake when I'm being so nice because I like compliment people all the time. <laughs> like, oh my gosh. And I, but that's genuine to who I am. I really feel that way. And so it's not like I'm being fake. And so it's like getting to the crux of that. Like, you know, that's who you are. Like, so don't be ashamed or don't worry about what other people think so that you can walk in your purpose. So for whatever that is for you, that brings light into the world, like stop dimming that light. Yes. Own it. Own it, mama. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You got this mama. (laughs) Own it. I love this conversation so much. I am loving it so much because I know that the moms that are listening, they have those days where they are just so overwhelmed to the point where they're just like frozen. Mm-hmm. They, oh, yeah. they are procrastinating. They are frozen. They don't know where to go because it's just so much and it's so heavy. So I think this conversation is giving them, I hope that permission to give yourself some love, give yourself some grace, but also start from where you are. Right. Yeah. And then start, there was this Instagram reel. I think it was our TikTok. I can't remember. And it was like the B word, you're doing a good job. You doing a good job. And I loved that because it was like, if you just stop and look back on what you did today, I mean, like, especially too, like when I was on maternity leave, so basically a stay at home mom, I'm like, I fed the baby eight times. I changed 27 diapers today. I made meals for myself. Like if you start capturing what you're doing, then like as a working mom, I got the kids dressed. I laid out their clothes. I packed their lunches. And my husband and I do this together, so I'm not taking all the credit for this. But, <laughs> I, um, but you know, I did all of these things. I answered 27. Like, if you start looking, you're like, dang, girl. Mm. Like, encourage yourself. Like, celebrate yourself. I did a good job today. Mm. I was actually patient with my kids today. And like you said, Josie, there's still, even, even through this transformation for me, I don't want to speak for you, but there's still days where you kind of feel like beat up and overwhelmed because there's a lot going on, but it's like coming back to that centered space on, Mm -hmm. I don't care if there's 20 things going on right now. What am I called to do in this moment? And Mm -hmm. there was a pastor that I can't remember what his name was, but he said, what's the next right thing? Mm -hmm. What is the next right thing for me to do in this moment? Because I can get consumed with all these things I think I know I should be doing, but let me get back centered and back to what I I need to do right now. Yep. That's true. It's focusing on what you can control. So many of the times we go to the things that we can't control because they're the big things and we think we have to do the big things. And so (laughs) if we come back to what is the next right move, I think Oprah's the one that says that one too, is Mm -hmm. what is the next right move? What is the most important thing in this moment? It shifts. And it's a practice. It's not something that is going to happen overnight. You have to practice it and you have to embody it and you have to have it in your heart, in your soul and till it becomes who you are. Yeah. It's a rewiring of the way that you operate and that takes time, but so important. It's worth it. It's worth it. If if we can be that near that light for that mama that is listening to us right now, it is possible for you to feel that joy again. It is possible to not be super overwhelmed all the time. I mean, we're human. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, it's going to happen, but you can walk different. I mean, you can feel totally different. You can feel like an empowered mom Mm -hmm. and that, and sorry, Josie, I don't want to throw anything off that you were going to ask, but that just made me think about something that was so huge for me was like getting back to like weightlifting and working out. Well, weightlifting was fairly new to me, but like, oh my gosh, when I started changing the way I looked, like that also made me feel like more than just a mom. Like, so Mm -hmm. I always like do this hashtag, like moms who lift because it's Mm -hmm. like, how empowering is that to be? A mom who takes time for herself Mm -hmm. to do things that help her feel like a boss, to help her feel empowered, that don't necessarily directly correlate to motherhood. Like, how awesome is that? Like, you are so much more than just a mom, even though motherhood pulls at your heartstrings so hard, you are so much more complex than that. And if you tap into those things that bring you light and joy, you're a better mom for it. 100%. And I love that moms that lift. (laughs) I love that. I don't know that. Yeah. That hashtag just fires me up. I'm like, yeah, we're strong. I I love it. And since becoming a mom, that is one thing I haven't done. I haven't lifted weights. So I need to get that. 
I need yeah, to get that swagger back. back. It. It feels good. It feels so good. <laughs> oh my gosh, Stacy, you are beautiful. You are beautiful. You are empowering. You're inspirational. And you are a mirror for me. You're a mirror for me on how you can have that life of living intentional in that presence. Also being that mom who works so hard and is a mom, not just a mom. And thank you for your message today. Thank you for your presence today. I feel full. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this was so good. <laughs> and I would love for you to tell them Make Life Fun Mamas how they can support you. They Tell them about your show and how they can work with you and all the things. Yeah, of course. Well, I just wanted to say that you have been such a light to me on this conversation. I definitely felt it. It felt so good just to be in your presence and be connected to you. And I'm so glad the Make Life Fun mom group and community has you. Like what an incredible connection to have you as a source and a life. You can connect with me on my podcast. It's called Faithful Mom Boss. I also have a Facebook community for moms. It's called Faithful Mom Boss as well. And you can join the Facebook group there too. I post all kinds of stuff that relates to my life, motherhood, on my Instagram at Stacey Michelle McRae. So I'm like my fitness, my food, motherhood, my hair, trying to comb my daughter's hair, which is the whole thing and all the things. And so I just hope that you can connect with me there. I'm going to start working with clients right now, primarily focused on their fitness and nutrition. So if you are a mom who is tired of feeling uncomfortable in your own skin, in and you know that there's more for you from a fitness standpoint. I'm going to be coaching some clients soon on that. So to keep a lookout for that too. Yay. And oh, I how exciting. Here. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, oh, that's so exciting. Congratulations on all of it. You're yeah. doing all the things. <laughs> trying. <laughs> You're doing it. You're doing it well. And the last message, do you have a message on your heart after this beautiful conversation about you're not just a mom, this conversation of fill yourself up and be led and guided and do the next best thing. Do you have anything else on your heart that is like, I need to speak these life into these moments that are listening? <laughs> yeah, I always got something to say to moms. So um, <laughs> the word that's coming to mind right now is worthiness. Um, you're worthy to fulfill the calling of motherhood. You're worthy to be a mom to those kids. And you're worthy to be everything that you've been purposed and called for that's outside of your motherhood role. I think one thing for me that was intimidating is I have all these passions and desires and it was like, there's no way. There's no way I'm going to be able to be a mom. There's no way I'm going to be able to have this career and be a supportive wife. There's no way I'm going to be able to do my, my side hustle too, which is coaching and podcasting and all these things. But it's like when God has called you to something, he will give you the grace to fulfill it. So when he's called you to motherhood, he's given you the grace to fulfill it. When he's called you to entrepreneurship, he'll give you the grace to fulfill it and he'll bring in the right people too. It's just constantly tilting your heart towards God and tilting your heart towards a space where you want to grow and evolve to become who you've been called to be. So that's what I would say. Yes. <laughs> oh, I felt it. I'm feeling it. And I am <laughs> letting it wash all over me down to the tips of my toes. Thank you so much, Stacey. This was such a pleasure. Same. Thank you, Josie. Thank you so much for listening to the make life fun show i hope you enjoyed yourself and got a little little gems little pieces of gold that you are taking to heart that you are not just listening but you're going to do something about it i want you to be fired up so yes so we come once a week come back listen to us here we are an all podcast places you listen we are also on youtube if you like to watch the show at Josie Wheatman. You can find us at Make Life Fun. And I am so stoked. And also come follow me, come play with me on Instagram at Josie Wheatman. I am dancing. I am showing my sweet baby. <laughs> and we're just having a ball. We're making life fun. And so come hang out with us. And thank you again for listening. Please subscribe to the show. Follow us. Leave us a review because the more you love up on me, other people can find the show and love up on us. And we build this community that is one of love and goodness. Also, I am taking clients. I'm taking one-on-one -on -one coaching clients. Like I said, we're talking about Bloom. We have a membership coming up and all the beautiful things. So there is a few ways that you can connect with me on that. So we have my website, which is backrosecoaching.com. You can go on there as well as you can join the mail list. So right now I have a 21 day raise your vibration challenge going on. It's an email challenge completely offhand. You wake up every day and you get these tidbits of goodness that light you up. So why not? 
not. It's a 21 day high vibration challenge. It's tools, it's simple, it doesn't require much. Most of them, if you want a little taste, is placing your hand on your heart and telling yourself you love yourself today. So yes, yeah, so come hang out with me, jump into my world. I've got you.